Welcome everyone to another tutorial video from Ava Technologies. I'm Howard, the music supervisor here. And today I'm very, very excited to show you our new updated piano roll in our music engine. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, you want to have a composition ready. And whether it's generated using our generation profiles feature or our influence feature, once you have a generated composition ready, move your mouse to the left and click on the pencil icon that says editor. That's how you get into our new revamped editor. So if you drag your mouse to the top left corner, there is going to be a slider there that says zoom that basically allows you to zoom in and out of the timeline for a better visualization of what's going on in the composition. And as you drag the slider to the right, you're going to see the ruler. This is how you're going to see uh, the composition in a higher resolution. So now we're seeing the composition in quarter note. And as we drag it further to the right, and you're going to see a higher resolution of 16 note. And also you can see the name of the chords that are being played in each measure. And you can just simply zoom out if you want to have a more holistic picture of the overall arrangement of your composition. And actually just below the zoom slider, there's also this option called tempo. That is where you can change the BPM or the tempo for your composition. If you want to change it, Simply just go to edit, just type whatever BPM that you want and press apply. And there you go. And up next, I want to talk about layers. As you can see in this composition, we have four layers. For our old users, you can skip to the marker right here because I'm going to explain what layers are to some of the newcomers here. So layers in the language of our music engine are a group of musical instruments that play more or less a similar role. For example, all of the keyboards used in this composition are playing in polyphony and building harmony. And in terms of sound, they're mostly sitting at the mid or upper mid range. So that's why they belong in the chords layer. And on the other hand, the instruments that are playing lower notes, like the electric or the synthesizer bass, are thrown in the bass layer. And same with the percussion layer, which is where all the percussive non-tonal elements stay, like the drums. And to be more exact, in Ava, we have two types of layer. So if you go to the top and click the new layer icon, you're going to see one pitch layer and two percussion layer. The chords and the bass layers and the extra layers in this case belong to the pitch layer because they are tonal, melodic, and harmonic. While in the case of a percussion layer, that applies to the electric kit, the acoustic drum kit, or anything percussive, anything that does not play melodic notes. So by clicking the new layer icon on top of our editor, you can pick either a pitch layer or a percussion layer to add to your composition. Well, next up is the real juice, editing our layers. And let's just pick one of those layers and then see what's happening inside. So as you can see, as you click onto the layer, it reveals the new piano roll editor right here. You can see the notes that are being played in this layer. And then if you click into a different layer, let's say we pick the bass layer, you're going to see the notes that are being played in the bass layer. And then it also reveals the piano roll editor that correspond to this layer. So you can see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see these are the notes for the extra layer. And if you click into the percussion layer, these are the percussion patterns for the percussion layer. And let's take a look into the one of the pitch layer. So as you go into the course layer, and then you can use the shortcut control plus to zoom in and out for a better visualization. So there are two ways you can go about editing these notes. So if you go onto the top left corner, there is this button called the select mode. So this basically enables you to drag different notes into different note durations, or you can move the notes vertically to change their note value. So let me demonstrate that. So right now you can see this cursor has changed and then this allows us to change the note duration by dragging it to the left or to the right. And of course you can drag it from the beginning of the note or the beginning of the chord too. And you can also see the pitch value, the note value as you move them upward or downward. All right, let's put it, let's put this chords back to where it is. And the second way to go about editing these notes 
is to go into the select mode again and click on it. Boom, it switches to the pencil mode and then it will enable you to draw notes in your compositions. And basically, I'm just gonna show you. So you're gonna see there's this pencil icon, right? What I did is just, I basically just drew, I just drew the note here to my desired note duration and I can draw whatever pitch value I want, whatever the note duration I want. The difference between this and the select mode is that you cannot, uh, you cannot drag the notes into different positions because the pencil mode only allows you to draw a note from scratch and drag it to your desired note duration. But if you also use the shortcut, which is shown right here, Command E on Mac or Control E if you're on a PC, switch into select mode and move your notes around. And then there's this extra note here and then we can just delete it. All right, next up, let's talk about how to edit the percussion layer. So um, go into the percussion layer, click on it. And in the language of our music engine, our percussion layer is made up of patterns. A pattern right here is sort of like a loop or a groove or an established musical idea and rhythm. Each pattern is played by different kits or in our case, different kits in a drum set. This is very similar to the concept of musical note that we talked about in the pitch layer, except that every note here plays a kit, not a melodic note. And these series of notes play in different kits is what we call a pattern. So you can browse different patterns by clicking them on the timeline. So you see this is pattern 25, this is pattern 26, this is pattern 3. Or you can go into the drop down menu here on your left. And here you can see all the patterns that are available in the percussion layer. And just click on it and you can see them. And just in case you don't like any of them, there's this gear icon to your right. Click on it. There's add pattern. So go to the right and click new channel that essentially means you can add a new kit in your uh, pattern editor and here I have a kick and I can have a snare I'll do a snare center before you click on it you can go to the right and change the resolution of the note and now we're on eighth note we can switch it to 16 we can also change the length of the pattern from two bars to one bar or four bars depending on what you like. So right here, I want to make a, let's say a four kind of on the floor pattern with the snare on the second and the fourth beat. So let's say you already created a pattern and then you want to make some kind of variation. You can also use this duplicate pattern option and just duplicate. So you see, we have pattern 27 doing the four on the floor. We also have the pattern 28 that we just duplicated from pattern 27 doing the same four on the floor, except that we can do a variation uh, that just add a random note on the snare center. And you can also rename the pattern by uh, clicking the rename pattern option or delete it uh, in case you don't like the pattern anymore. And now I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but remember the pencil tool that we just talked about? Yes, it also works with patterns. So let me just scroll to the right where there's still some empty space left. So you can go to the select mode over here or just use a shortcut, command E or control E and switch to pencil mode and make sure you select the right pattern from the drop down on the left. So let's say you want to add a uh, pattern 27. So right here with the pencil tool uh, enabled, you can just press on it. Boom. And there is your pattern. You can just click on it and then draw your pattern 27 on the timeline. And let's say you don't want to do it manually by clicking the timeline every time you want to uh, draw a pattern on the timeline. You can also, let me just enlarge it real quick. You can also go to the top right corner of your pattern. See, there's this, uh, there's this icon over here. You can just drag it and there you go you can loop your patterns without having to um, click on the timeline every time you want to draw the same pattern. Now let's take a look at the left side of the piano roll, which is a list of all the available effects that we can apply to our layer. So there is dynamics and there is EQ, which consists of low frequency cut and high frequency cut. And there are also two time-based effects, the reverb and the delay, and also this function that we call auto staccato. And 
if you want to disable it, just simply go to the on off button to its left and then just click on it. And if it's not highlighted, that means it's off. And let's say you want to edit the parameter on any given effect. Simply click the automation icon on the right and the editor will display the automation curve applied to your layer. And you can just use the slider here to set a constant value and then just press apply. Boom. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned this mode called pencil mode. This also applies to drawing an automation curve on our parameters for different effects. So if you just go above here, or you can use the shortcut command E if you're on a Mac or control E if you're on a PC and switch to pencil mode and voila. I'm going to draw a sine wave because I am an audio engineering nerd. This doesn't look like a sine wave at, at all, <laughs> but you get a gist of it. And the same goes with any other effects. And there's also this copy and paste button, which allows you to apply the automation on this effect to the same effect on all the other layers, which is pretty convenient. Okay, after we're done with the effect, we can scroll down and see a list of instrument tracks in our layer. And there is also an icon named Add Instrument. And as the name suggests, it allows you to add a new instrument track to your layer. So simply click it and boom, there you go. There's a new instrument track. And by default, it will be the Steinway piano. But if you just click on the drop down menu, you can shop whichever instrument that you want and you think best fit your composition. In this case, I might just stick with uh, whichever piano. Let me just do a quick um, shopping. I'll do the Steinway because I'm boring. <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, we have the Steinway right here, and then let's go through the all the dials and faders on the instrument track. We have the level fader that is in charge of the volume. We have the dial here in charge of the panning, and we also have the gear icon for transposition, and and also control over the dynamics. And there's also a toggle for sustain pedal if you're working with piano. And there's also the mute button and the solo button for you to use. And right here, this is what we call an instrument block. And hear me out, this is pretty important. As long as there are instrument blocks drawn on an instrument track on the timeline, that instrument track will play the notes in the piano roll above. And definitely, definitely be aware of that because sometimes even I wonder why there's no sound coming out from my instrument. And that was precisely because I forgot to draw an instrument block. Let's play the chorus layer and see what it sounds like. So you see there are two instruments being played right now, the Steinway piano and also the lo-fi electric piano. And you can see the remaining instruments down here are not playing. As you can see, the level faders uh, hasn't moved an inch for all these instruments. And that is precisely because there is no instrument block being drawn here for these instrument track. And just as a refresher, the select mode and the pencil mode that we talked about earlier for drawing notes also applied for instrument blocks. So if we are on select mode, we can move the instrument block or drag it to our desired duration. And if we use the shortcut or just click the select mode again, we can switch it to pencil mode and then that will allow us to draw instrument blocks for different instrument track. And let's see if I'm right. So supposedly now we have instrument blocks drawn for all these instruments. They should be all playing at the same time. So let's see. All right, so we are right. So that's how the instrument blocks work. And if you browse through the top of our editor, you can also see this button called mixing. And if you click on it, you're gonna see the settings for auto mixing. So what is really good about this auto mixing feature is that we get to decide the relative loudness of each layer and have the music engine deliver a professional mix based on our preferences. So let's say we want the percussion to sound louder. We can just add a few dBs here. And then we want an extra layer maybe to tone down a little bit so we can just dial down a couple of dBs. 
And just on the right of the mixing button where we just set up our auto mixing is the option for customized effects. This includes bass boost, which as its name suggests, boosts up the bass and makes it fatter, uh, which will come in very handy if you're working with hip hop, trap, or other genres that put a strong emphasis on the low end. Another customized effect is the vinyl effect, which adds the kind of crackling noise you hear from the vinyl record to your mix. And I'm sure all the lo-fi beat enjoyers watching this will love it. So lastly, there is the unfollow playhead, or follow playhead option on the top of the editor. So what it means is it will allow uh, the editor to follow the playhead's position. So wherever the track is, uh, the editor will always follow where the composition is playing. So for example, let me just show you real quick. So it will just sort of automatically turns the page for you. So you don't have to manually follow the playhead like this using the scroll bar, uh, which is kind of, which is a very highly manual process uh, with this enabled. You can just have the editor follow the playhead's position wherever it goes. Oh, and one more thing. So if you're an old user of Ava, you probably already know this feature already. But uh, if you click on one of these sections here, so let's say I click on the A1 section. So there are options where you can insert a new section before or after the section that you uh, selected, or you can replace this, this section or regenerate the section or regenerate the section based on another specific section. So if you press a uh, section B as a source section uh, for regeneration, uh, you can just press section B. And then as long as you see the section that you just selected being highlighted, that means that it is ready for regeneration. And then the very, very last step will be save those changes. So the regenerated section will be saved. And also the parameters that we had for our auto mixing and the customized effect that we selected earlier, those will be saved by simply clicking save changes. And I would personally recommend picking the mix and normalize option uh, as our mixing option because this will allow the music engine to balance the loudness of each layer for us based on our preference that we set in the auto mixing window. So let's save those changes and let the rendering begin. Boom, there we go. Here is the rendered composition with a new regenerated section with our auto mixing parameters and our customized effects in place. And before we go, I want to share with you a very nice feature that is only available on our desktop app. So if you're on our desktop app, simply click the uh, personal account icon on the bottom left corner and go into settings. And there will be a additional audio settings tab available. So you can manually set the directory where you want to save the instruments to save some space for your computer. And remember to always restart the application after you change the instrument directory so that the instrument directory will be updated. And there it is. That's the tutorial for our new updated piano roll in our music engine. So if you find this tutorial helpful, please comment, like, or subscribe to our YouTube channel or go into our Discord community and join us. You can find the link to our Discord community below in the description and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.